Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing side series, Ranking Rancor, where I rank my top 5 3D and 2D Sonic games of all time. And today at the number 3 spot for 3D, we have the original Sonic Adventure. And I will say if I ranked this series based purely on nostalgia, Sonic Adventure would have definitely taken the number 1 spot. But as years go on, I can recognize that while nostalgia-wise it may be my favorite 3D Sonic game, mechanics-wise and the whole package, I'm going to have to leave it at number 3. But as usual, I've developed a very scientific method to rank all these games, and that is down to my pure opinion. So maybe you 100% agree with me, maybe you think this is a foolish pick, it's just how I feel. And I will say, I did not wait until 1999 to get a Dreamcast and this game. I remember seeing previews in magazines, screenshots, and even downloading a 30 second trailer on my 56.6 dial up modem back in like 1997, early 98. That's how excited I was for it. Because I was a huge fan with Sonic on the Genesis, and having owned a Saturn and not getting a mainline Sonic release, I was definitely extremely excited for this. So what I did was, I actually saved up my lawn mowing money, and I imported a copy of this game, as well as Virtual Fighter 3 and a Dreamcast from Japan, and waited for the FedEx driver to come and give him a money order, because back then you couldn't actually, at least the sites I used, pay for your import games with a credit card. You had to do cash on delivery, and that's just how it worked in the 90s in importing games. But I remember when the FedEx driver showed up with this, I ran inside and opened it up, and this first level to me, it's still pure gaming nostalgia, a perfect memory. Seeing the whale just burst through the pier that you're running on. When I saw that, it felt like something wholly different and wholly innovative and unique. And just the graphics back in 98 just felt like having the arcade in your home. Because for the longest time, arcade games were just so much more graphically impressive than what you would get on home consoles. But Dreamcast seemed to close that gap, and it's really not surprising because the Naomi platform was just a derivative of the Dreamcast with more processing power and more RAM. So Dreamcast technically was an arcade system in your home. But this first level is just pure perfection to me, even if I can see all the bugs and glaring issues in it. And it's definitely one of those things that, you know, in 98 I was 14 going on 15, and I could definitely forgive a lot of the issues with gameplay mechanics or bugs that today as an adult when I play the game can kind of drive me nuts. But I try to look past those and try to combine how I felt about the game back then with how I feel about it now, and it's still a very enjoyable game to play. I still play this maybe once every couple years from start to finish, because not only nostalgia-wise is it just something that I fondly remember, but it's also something that I think holds up relatively well and is still a fun experience now. But back in 98 when I played it, I was just blown away, and I was probably the coolest kid that year, up until the Dreamcast actually released in North America, and I probably became way less cool, but everyone wanted to come over and see Sonic Adventure in action, because it was just hyped up to high hell. Every magazine, every like old dial-up internet site, everything was the Dreamcast is coming, Sonic Adventure. You couldn't look anywhere and not see advertisements or promotions for this game. And even now, here with the Egg Hornet battle, I will say the boss battles still hold up really well. They're still enjoyable to play, the controls are good, the mechanics are nice. It's still just a great experience. And if I upscale this to 1080p with my Frame Meister and then let my Samsung OLED TV upscale to 4K, there's a tiny bit of lag, but it still looks really good on a 4K TV. And granted, the Dreamcast graphics are aged by this point in time, but unlike something like the PlayStation 1, it still has enough quality to it that it feels like it's as good as it needs to look. Now, granted, would I love a you know 4K remaster of this game from Sega? Absolutely. I'd love to see Sonic Adventure in modern graphics, kind of like how they revamped some of the Mario games or some of the other 3D platform games. But in lieu of that, being able to just play this on a Dreamcast and go back to it and experience it is still incredible. I will say that, you know, the story bits, they're decent. The voice acting is okay, although Eggman always has a great voice actor. He's always leaps and bounds better than Sonic and Tails. But it's a good enough story that you feel compelled to see what's going on. And I do really enjoy that they had the open world elements in this game versus Sonic Adventure 2. Kind of like where Super Mario Galaxy 2 took out the open world from Super Mario Galaxy, Sonic Adventure 2 took out the open world from Sonic Adventure, and while it's not the most thrilling gameplay, I do like that it slows down and you're able to more explore the world of Sonic and just kind of poke around and see what's going on. And there's one of those massive bugs, the camera's stuck on a wall, and this is definitely Sega struggling with how to develop a full 3D game. And while I think they do a better job than a worse job, 
it's still an issue to this day with Sonic games is how do you make a move that fast in 3D without having issues of getting stuck on level geometry and having bugs where you basically just are forced into a death. And it's still something that happens now, but at least with the homing dash, that works perfectly in this game. And Sega's definitely gotten worse at making the homing dash work as time's gone on. But even the stage as well, it's just, I can almost put myself back in the headspace and remember what it was like to play this when I got that Dreamcast imported from Japan on day one. And it was just blew me away. And still to this day, this game just makes me happy. And that's a lot of the reason why we all play video games in general is because it's an enjoyable pastime. It makes us smile. It makes us feel good. It's just a happy thing that we love to do. And I can go back to this game time and time again. And every time I play it, I enjoy myself, I smile, it's always a great experience, and that's why I love coming back to Sonic Adventure, because it just was a time and place in gaming where things were changing so rapidly, and all the graphics and all the sizes of the games and what could be shown and experienced were just growing every year that it kind of felt like you were watching the future unfold, you know, right in front of your eyes. Now that we move on here, I love the music, I love the soundtrack, everything's great, and a lot of the set pieces as you're running down the suspended pathway, you're going to go inverted on a piece of geometry, and it just felt like nothing I'd ever seen before, and even now, when Sonic's moving fast and controlling well, it still feels right. It's something about it, there's the motion of it, the forward momentum, it feels exactly what I want a Sonic game to feel like. And as you'll see here, we keep running down. We're going to take a quick death here soon. And there's definitely a lot of cheap deaths in this game. There's areas in which you do everything right and the game is just going to bug out and kill you anyway. And that's something that pretty much every 3D Sonic game has always had in it. But this is the first time we actually had to experience that. And I will say, as a kid, there were some areas that just felt annoying. Like this right here, trying to get up onto that. I think it's a gigantic stump, it just felt a little bit tricky and it didn't feel natural. And I think that was just a little bit of the growing pains moving into 3D. Nintendo definitely did it better with Super Mario 64, but even that game now has some areas where it just feels like you're stuck on geometry or the camera's going to fight you or you die unfairly. But as we run off the end of this ramp, just keep holding forward, Sonic gets caught up in this breeze and the game dumps me right out into a death, which is a bummer. But I've already talked for 7 minutes and 46 seconds per my timeline, so enjoy a little bit of the soundtrack, and I'll come back in just a second and close out Sonic Adventure, but I love the game so much I could just keep talking. And you will see that I took a second cheap death there as well, and I left that in, and I love how Sonic's head clips right through Tails' face and just looks completely mangled. And there's definitely those growing pains, just it being in 3D, and some of it's kind of humorous. Some of the cheap deaths can be definitely annoying, but you can kind of deal with the bugs because this was the first time Sega had tried it. And things like this ice cave here, while today don't look very impressive, in 98 and 99, it just absolutely blew me away. But if you've never played Sonic Adventure, you have to go do it. It's basically like essential reading for video games. It's like not having played Super Mario 64. If you haven't checked it out yet, you 100% should. And that's just my recommendation of the game. I put it in the number three spot because it's definitely buggy, and I think Sega's done a better job with the 3D games since then, and you'll have to wait to see what number two and one are. But from pure nostalgia, this is definitely my favorite 3D Sonic game of all time if I'm just factoring in my memories and not the gameplay itself. But short of that, we really appreciate you guys watching. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It takes us a lot of time and energy to make each one of these episodes, and we appreciate your support. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I love answering them. Otherwise, we will be back on Sunday and Tuesday with episodes in those series, and we will be back shortly with some more Sonic ranking. We may throw some Apple Pippin stuff in between. I'm not sure yet. But otherwise, the number two and the number one pick in 2D and 3D are coming up shortly. And you'll see here... Sometimes Sonic Adventure can be a pain, and if you hit the wrong button, you're totally going to blow your progress. Thanks so much for watching.
See you next time. Bye-bye.